G'day guys, Lemon Eating Cow here, and today I'm back playing Final Fantasy XV, and I hope you'll excuse my uh, rather croaky voice. Hopefully by next video it'll be repaired. Anyway, the guide today is on the Toto Mostro, which is a uh, arena in Altitia City, and you can bet on monsters for medals, and then you can trade those medals in for various prizes. Now, you can reach here as soon as Chapter 9, but you're probably going to need quite a bit of gill to actually do this. I would say you want at least 68,000 gill, round about there, but of course the more you can the better. If you need to make some gill quick, then I have two guides, which I'll link at the end of the video and in the description, so check those out if you need a bit of extra gill. So, follow the path that I've been walking so far, you're going to have to take two gondolas along this trip, but we're at one at the moment. After your first gondola trip, you walk up to this guy and he's selling various horns. Now the horns can be blown during battle that you're watching and they'll buff your various creatures with different effects. The one that I would recommend personally getting is the Horn of Madness. It buffs your monster's attack a lot but drops their defense which can be useful in certain situations. Now once you've bought whatever horns you want, jump on the next gondola and that'll take you directly to the arena. So here we are at the Coliseum, uh, but before we can start betting on uh, any of the fights, we're going to have to go buy some medals, which is the currency here for betting. So we'll come down to the medal, and the way this works is the amount of gill that you put in, you'll get 10 times less the amount of medals. So if we want 10,000 medals, we're going to have to spend 100,000 gill. I would recommend getting 10,000 medals to start off with, or... Uh, 9,999 because that is the highest amount that you can bet on any single fight and of course if you bet the maximum every time you're gonna you know speed this process up as long as you're winning every time that is anyway so I'll go ahead and buy 10,000 uh, medals there purchase medals I've as you can see I've already got 559,000 I've done this a little bit before but yeah starting from zero you're gonna need that 10,000 so to start off, we're going to go to wager now that we have our medals and you'll be presented with this screen that shows two to four different groups of enemies. Now the main thing you're going to be looking at here to start off with is the odds. Uh, I can't really go into explaining odds too much in this video, but I would highly recommend if you don't know about odds and how they work to go to Wikipedia or something along those lines and just do a little bit of a... Uh, catch up on how odds work because you know it's a useful useful skill in real life anyway to know. Anyway, you're gonna go tr gonna try and go with the the best odds for you. So say like a two for one or two to zero is a pretty good chance. And you're also gonna have to look at the condition. The more arrows indicates the better condition of the animal, and they're gonna perform better with the higher condition. So yeah. Now that's the, the statistics of it, but of course each time that you choose the, these animals they're going to act slightly differently and uh, the other animals around them are going to act slightly differently as well, so you can never really 100% predict the outcome. It's just a matter of uh, experience and intuition and knowledge, I guess, just knowing what each is capable of. Generally I'll either go for a very powerful single enemy like the Royalist Kia is, he, he's pretty good, he has a jumping attack, he jumps in, doesn't get hit very often, and he has a decent amount of HP, so he's a pretty solid bet. The Coral Devil, generally, generally he's alone. Uh, I don't find he performs as well as the Sea Devils, purely because he's on his own. Uh, but sometimes I have been proven wrong, but I usually stay away from him. The Sea Devils I really like, they do a like a water beam attack out of their mouth, so I usually pick them when I can, but for this one I think I'm going to go with the Royalisk. So once you've chosen what you want to do, hit X on them, and then I usually spend the maximum amount, uh, which is 9,999, purely because I, you know, I'm a kind of all or nothing guy, so yeah, here we go, 999. And the reward will be based on your odds. So the higher the odds, the more money you're going to win, but of course it's going to be harder for you to actually win that match because of uh, 
the odds are stacked against you. Anyway, we'll go to begin match. And you'll notice in the bottom left hand corner I have Horn of Fortitude selected. And you can press L1 or I1 to go to different horns. And the Horn of Fortitude is a heal. Horn of Resolve is a boost your defense. Well, there you go, our Royalist is already doing the work. Horn of Tenacity is uh, attack up. Horn of Cleansing gets rid of any status effects. And see, we've got the circle there. That's the indication to blow the horn. And we killed the dude before it. But if you get that circle button up, you just have to mash the circle button and uh, you'll blow whatever horn that you have selected at the moment. Uh, that can really turn the tide of battle. Uh, especially if you use the Horn of Madness. It gives your monsters a really high attack rate or uh, strength, but it lowers their defense dramatically. So I usually use it on big packs of very weak enemies because they're going to die in one hit anyway, but you want them to try and get in some lucky hits and knock out as many monsters as they, as they can. So we'll take a quick look at one more match. Uh, hopefully this video isn't dragging on too long. Here we go, we get a good selection. As you can see there, the odds are, are pretty low for that one, but the condition is very high, so he could be a good choice, depending on what else we got. We got Fangs of Habit, Havoc. These guys generally, they usually die in most of my matches, in my experience, so I wouldn't recommend these guys. The Rivens are, yeah, not too bad, but I haven't seen them win a match yet. And the Trient. These guys, or Trent, Trent, Trent. I don't know, the tree dude. Uh, the tree dude usually wins in my experience. As you can see, his condition is huge. The odds are quite good. So uh, we're going to go for him and just kick some ass, basically. I'm going to use the Horde of, Horn of Fortitude. He has a decent amount of HP. So uh, he can take a few hits and then I heal him up with the Horn of Fortitude. So we'll jump in. We'll put a maximum bet on him. And yeah, because he's... Uh, a sure win, the reward will be quite low, but you know, good medals, medals is better than nothing, so yeah. They're walking around, sizing each other up, Trent goes in, bang, one hit. He's pretty good, he's a bit of a powerhouse, so I like this dude. He doesn't tend to have many AoE attacks though, which is his only downfall, but yeah. There we go, we get our circle, so we're gonna mash our circle button, and see there, I got healed for 350. So it can be pretty powerful. Uh, especially if you get a high HP uh, monster, you can just use the heal a numerous times in the fight. And there, you can see the Trent pretty much every time is going to wipe everyone out, so he's a really good choice. But, like I said, the reward at the end of it is probably going to be pretty low. Yeah, we only double our money, which is, for me, yeah, not that great. So, that is the basics of the fight. I'll just go over what animals I usually bet on when I see them up. The Coral, or the uh, Cats with the Big Whiskers, are a pretty sure bet. The King Trice, or the Royal Ice, or the Royal Trice, sorry, are the Big Chickens, basically. They're pretty solid bets. The Duplicorns are really good, and you'll know what tough bastards they are if you've been doing the uh, Sturdy Horn, Sturdy Helix Horn Farm. Uh, Tonberries are a very good, solid bet. Gigatoads are quite good, they've got a high amount of HP. Uh, the Sea Devils are really good for their uh, their Water Beam attack. The Flexi Tusks, they're like the upgraded version of the Saber Tusks. I usually use the Horn of Madness with them, as well as the Saber Tusks, because they have a low amount of HP, but if they can get a few hits off, they absolutely devastate anything. And they usually move in packs, so that's quite good as well. So that is the basics of the arena. Uh, hopefully that was enough to explain what's going on and now I'll explain the prizes a little bit. I won't go over all of them because some of them are pretty self-explanatory but uh, there's a few in there that you should know about. So the Magitech generator, the cost is extreme. In my experience it's going to take you quite a while to get up this amount of metals, 3.6 million. Uh, if you've got heaps of cash then I don't know, spend it on that but uh, I don't think it's a solid investment especially because once you reach end game you can actually get the Regalia Type F, which will give you unlimited fuel, and it'll make your car fly. So I would personally hold out till then. I think this is a bit of a waste of time doing it at this point. But if it's something you really want to do, then by all means. The Diamond Bracelet, 
it's good if you get an early game, but otherwise I would recommend going after the Dark Matter bracelet. bracelet. The Big Bang is a skin or the decal skin for the Regalia. It's important to note that this is the only, it's only for the normal Regalia. It won't work on the Type F. If you want it working on the Regalia, you have to revert the Type F back and put this skin on. Uh, so yeah, it's quite a nice skin, but uh, it's a bit useless once you've got the Type F. Uh, anything else like weapons, uh, there's a few equips here. Yeah, they're okay, but it's, you know, personal choice and where you are in the game. So yeah, I won't really go over those. The turbocharger can be good if you get it early in the game, if you drive it around a lot. But me personally, I didn't really see the need for it, but it's quite cheap. You can just spend 150,000 gil and buy it straight out. The coal whiskers you can use for the drain lines three. Uh, so if you haven't got them already, it could be a good place to get them. And I've heard that guides tell you to buy a lot of these great Gorilla Tusks and then sell them for uh, for Gil, but I personally don't find that all that quick. Uh, I would rather play uh, Justice Monsters 5. Also, it's important to note that there is another fishing reel here, but I've already bought it and I don't have a save file where I could just come here and show you it but it's the best reel in the game, well, the best reel that I had access to outside of Quest. So you can actually find what that reel is in my fishing tutorial. Anyway, that pretty much wraps up the Toto Mostro Coliseum. I hope this has given you a little bit of insight or new information on it, and you dominate the hell out of the Coliseum. I hope this guide has helped you out. If it has, please leave a like. Uh, if you've got any comments or suggestions or better ways of doing things, please leave it in the comments below. And please don't forget to subscribe. This has been Lemon Eating Cow. And remember, brothers, what we do in life echoes in eternity. Move.